All right, welcome back everybody. A list. A list is a data structure that represents a list of objects that can be accessed by index. It's similar to an array, but they can increase and decrease dynamically in size during runtime, which arrays cannot do. So here's an example of an array. An array has a static fixed size, and we cannot change it normally after runtime. So let's create a standard array just for this example. Let's create an array of food. String food equals new string. And let's say that this array has a size of three. So I'm going to add some elements to this array. And then I can display these elements with a symbol for each loop. pizza, hamburger, and hot dog. So if I attempt to add another element to this array, this is what happens. We'll run into an exception, an index out of range exception, because index was outside the bounds of the array. So you can't normally change the size of an array. Another option is to use a list. A list can increase and decrease dynamically in size during runtime. So let's create a list. Step one is that we'll need to import system.collections.generic. So include this at the top. I'll place it right underneath using system. And this is how to declare a list. List, then within angle brackets, list the type of object you would like to store, strings. And then I will name this list food equals new list, angle brackets, the data type again, parentheses, semicolon, and we now have a list named food. And to add elements to this list, there is a built-in add method, food.add, then within this method, pass in the object you would like to store. I would like to store, let's say a pizza, then a hamburger, then a hot dog. So food.add pizza, hamburger, and hot dog. And let's take a look. So we have our pizza, hamburger, and hot dog. And I bet we can add even more than three elements. So it appears that our list can resize dynamically, which is a bonus. Then to access one of these elements, it's much like an array, you use that set of straight brackets. So I'm going to display whatever's within element number zero, food index zero. And that would be pizza. So accessing an element is the same as an array. You just type the list name and then add a set of straight brackets, then the index number. Okay, so here's a few other useful methods of lists. There is a remove method, food.remove, then type in what you would like to remove. I would like to remove fries. And let's see if that's still in here. Nope, fries is missing. Pizza, hamburger, hot dog. So that is the add method and remove method, but there's a few other useful methods. So we can insert an object at a given element. Let's insert maybe sushi at index one via the insert method. Food.insert, then we need an index and an item. So at the beginning of our list, at index zero, I will insert sushi. Sushi, pizza, hamburger, hot dog, fries. We can get the current size of our array using the count property. So within a right line statement, I'm going to display food.count property. And the current size of our list is four. So that is the count property. We can find the index of an element. Food.index of and let's find where pizza is. So that is at index zero. You can also find the last index of a given item. So what if we have fries both in the beginning and at the end? Food.add fries. So I have that in the beginning and at the end. So I'm going to use the last index of method. Food.last index of fries. And the last index of fries is at four. Zero, one, two, three, four. So let me get rid of that. OK, 
Okay, we can check to see if our list contains a given item using the contains method. Food dot contains pizza. This will return a boolean. True if pizza is within our list and false if not. Pizza is within our list, so that returns true. And that is the contains method. Then we have sort. Food dot sort. This will sort our list alphabetically. So our list in alphabetical order is fries, hamburger, hot dog, pizza. And we can sort in reverse order. Food dot reverse. And our list in reverse order is fries, hot dog, hamburger, pizza. We can clear our list. Food dot clear. And now our list is empty. And lastly, we can convert our list into an array. So I'm going to declare a new array string. Let's say food array equals food dot to array. String item in food array. So we have pizza, hamburger, hot dog, fries. Well, okay then everybody, that is a list. It's similar to an array. It's a data structure that represents a list of objects that can be accessed by index. It's similar to an array, but they can increase and decrease dynamically in size, but they waste more memory. So yeah, those are lists in C-sharp. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop a random comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.